I'm Francesca. I've been working for Ryanair for almost seven years. And that's because I wanted to be flight attendant since I was a kid, because I really loved the idea of traveling, because my family didn't want me to travel, like didn't want me and my sisters to travel. So that for me was the perfect job in order to, you know, follow my dreams. Well, when I started to work with Ryanair, uh, it was actually the first occasion that I had a contract in my life because I've been working since I was 14, but in the south of Italy, normally they don't give you a contract. So that for me was something like totally new. I was so happy that I was thinking that Ryanair was like the best employer ever until, of course, then I started to work and I saw the reality of the facts. And for the first year and a half, I was in Belgium. Then I swapped and I went to Germany. And that's where I started to see um, how little care the company had for us. And that's when I started to uh, try and change things. That's when I started then to join the union and started to talk to the other people about get, going on strike and make our voices heard. Because as soon as I arrived in Germany, the average salary was between three and 800 euros in a very expensive city as Frankfurt. So we didn't have a basic salary. We were getting fired for being sick. Um, there was no compliance with the labor, local labor law and uh, that for me was becoming, let's say, unacceptable after more than a year with that company and above all after they gave me a transfer in a base where they needed new people. Then I reached Frankfurt and I saw that uh, things were just not right, not correct and uh, yeah, that's when then uh, I started, let's say, to try and create the movement of the Ryanair workers. If I have a magic wand and it gives me the possibility only to change three things in Ryanair, I would be very disappointed because there are so many things to change. Um, one of the many things is the fact that, well, the behavior of the company, I would say, because they have zero care for their employees. Whenever you make a complaint or you send an inquiry, a so-called query, um, which is the way to contact the company whenever you have an issue, uh, they just don't reply you back. They never solve the problem. They just ignore you. So maybe I would change that in general, you know, like the way they approach and the inquiries of, the, of their own employees. Then I would change the roster, which is basically our working pattern. We work in the very early morning and we return back sometimes during the night and we have this shift which basically allow you to work on earlies, which means the early morning for five days, then you have three days off and five days on late shift, which means that you return back late in the night. This means that in the end of your late shift, you can return back at home at one, half, half past one in the night and then you will have to wake up for the next week at half past two or half past three in the night and that's very harsh and most of the times they even remove you days off so therefore you don't really get to have that five three pattern which is normally supposed to be granted by contract so that's one of the many things then in general i would restructure and the payment and give the possibility to receive way more money because the people is just now not surviving like it's just a constant struggle the prices are going up the minimum wage increased and the cabin crew have been working like crazy after covid so we have been working let's say at a capacity of 120 percent compared to pre-covid uh, period but with way less people while being understaffed and while being still subject to pay cuts so if i could change something I would definitely change in general, you know, like the payment and give the possibility to earn more because it's something that we are trying to reach with negotiations. But I have to tell you, like negotiating with the company, it's a very, very harsh task because they just do not want to find any compromise. The strikes. <laughs> That's definitely the answer because we, we got to organize European strikes. So we got to cooperate uh, together with the other colleagues from the other countries. So we had international strikes in the summer of 2018 and basically almost all the countries of the Ryanair uh, network participated to the strike and that I think was a very empowering moment because uh, 
in some of the German bases, like for example Frankfurt, which was the base that I organized, uh, we got numbers which were easily reaching or maybe even passing the 90% of participation. And that for a company which is used to threaten cabin crew, threaten employees, and it's using intimidation, mobbing and so on, that was quite a big result. So that definitely sent a message both to the company which is that the cabin crew are just not happy with what is going on. But it also gave me a message because I thought that whatever I was trying to do was the correct thing because it was backed up by all the other colleagues. Most of the times there is miscommunication, intimidation or just the Im total impossibility from the employees to find procedures. Like basically the company sometimes just make disappear procedures in order to exploit even better the people. And this is like something, yeah, kind of unacceptable or they just create some new rules in order to try and find some loopholes in the law. And therefore they try to go past the agreements that are in place since after the strikes. Um, because you know the yeah the fact that they just like in general change procedures and they do not really allow cabin crew to be always informed about their rights and what they should be doing or not uh, that in general uh, creates an obstacle in the creation of the no not in the creation but you know into keeping the movement alive in general you know like the movement for workers rights and so on because most of the times cabin crew are confused and some other times they are just too afraid um, because unfortunately with the Ryanair most of the time uh, we have a very high turnover which means that a lot of times crew are changing at a very high rate which means that, for example, they start working and then after two, three months, they just stop working. They give resignation because uh, they don't receive pay. Like sometimes it happened that cabin crew were not receiving their salary for up to six months and they weren't even receiving a pay slip. So they couldn't even check whether they got their social insurance paid. And um, also there are the six months probation at the beginning. Then as soon as you get employed, with, with the Ryanair, which is the directly employment uh, contract, because at first you get employed with an agency and you have six months probation. Then you get employed with the Ryanair and you get another six months probation. And then you might get a little promotion, which is really ridiculous because you get to have a qualification, but not a position. Um, and you get paid the same money, but you have another trial period. And this is a big obstacle when it's about um, creating a sustainable movement in general because we had the possibility to create a very strong movement in 2018 but with covid of course everybody went down to scratches so there are yes a lot of obstacles but i think that the problem of the probation and in general of the high turnover so the fact that the people is resigning and coming constantly creates a very let's say shaky kind of ground where you have to restart from every time well, the first thing is that we need to really have a switch in mentality of the company because it's not about regulation. The problem is that most of the times the company doesn't even comply with regulation. They don't comply with the agreement you have in place. They just don't comply with anything that is, as I said before, a total lack of care. So it's not so much about regulation, but it's more, uh, it's more about the business model and the culture behind that business model, which is totally unfair and inhuman, totally inhuman. So that needs to change. We cannot look at the CEO talking super bad about the employees of the company he's representing, disrespecting the flight attendant and just imposing, like in general, you know, like this business model imposing, you know, like these conditions and just forgetting or skipping salaries. I mean, like there is just, it, you just need basically a revolution in the meaning of a total change of mentality, as I said before. It's not about rules there. Like in general, uh, aviation needs to be reduced because it is a need. Flying is a need above all when we are talking about like migrant workers. Uh, 
so people living abroad for one reason or another, it is a right for you, the one of being capable to return back to your home country. And I think that nobody should argue differently. But aviation and in general, you know, like the very big polluter um, kind of sectors should and need to be reduced. Uh, then if I have to talk specifically about uh, Ryanair, I hope it will totally disappear after, you know, like once, let's say, the whole um, ecological crisis is over. Uh, unfortunately, for the moment, I see it, I see it, let's say, hard to really uh, fight, you know, like I see very hard. The, I don't see it, let's say, possible, the, the fact that Ryanair will just disappear from one day to the other because they are just using the fact that people unfortunately do not have very big economical possibilities and therefore they are offering, let's say, what everybody wants, which is a cheap flight, whether it is to return back home or to go on holiday. I think it needs to be tackled. I don't know if it will be. I want to be optimistic, so at least I want to say that it needs to be reduced because that is what should be done uh, unavoidably. I would definitely stay, let's say, on the worker side and work for, in general, like workers' rights, which I think it's always like something, let's say, sustainable because it's about fairness, it's about right. There cannot be anything wrong in it. Um, so that for me, let's say, would be the thing and the way to move on because if we are talking about a future in a post-ecological crisis, we are also talking about, we are also, let's say, speculating on the fact that there is, there is going to be a just transition. So an, eco an ecological transition and also a lot of jobs most probably will just either disappear or totally change by reusing and reskilling the people that lost the previous job in order to get another more ecological and more sustainable. So in that kind of, uh, of future, yeah, I would definitely keep doing basically what I already tried to do with, uh, with Ryanair. So, you know, to be on the worker's side, because that is about human dignity. I really hope that the Ryanair struggle is going to be seen and remembered as a victory, because it's a big fight against a giant monster and that needs to be remembered as a victory against really the bad people in a highly capitalistic system which has no respect whatsoever for workers. So yeah, definitely as a nice victory. Yeah. The fact is that it was like the whole struggle has always been a do ut des, which means basically a give and take, give and receive. Uh, so, of course, like I met a lot of beautiful people uh, in the whole, let's say, in my whole, let's say, process in between Frankfurt and now in Berlin, because then in the meantime they closed my base, which was then Frankfurt. Um, and if I managed to stay for so long in Ryanair in general, it's right because I met a lot of incredible people. So it's because of the fight and it's because of the people I met at work. And the whole Frankfurt base, which is where I was before, uh, that gave me all the strength because I had all the support. We became a family, so we were always helping each other. And I, as much as I can have my ideology, it couldn't have gone so much farther if I didn't have all those friends and that which I still consider my friends, my family, because I still have a very nice relationship with them. And also, of course, I had very good people that were helping me also from the union side, which were really supportive, really trying to help in general the Ryanair workers, which were really understanding what we were passing through. They were really understanding how unacceptable the whole thing is. But in general, the human factor is always necessary because you cannot be alone in a fight. It's not a one person or one hero type of fight. It's always a whole movement. You don't go anywhere if you don't have that. So more than a relationship, I would say a very nice base, a very big family.
which is what I'm very proud of and very happy of.